everybody. I'm glad to have you. We are once again just Zoom classes. And um, so there isn't anybody in the room but you. So thank you for being here. Um, once more, we will get through this pandemic thing that's going on. And one of the ways that we can do that is by use, doing yoga and using yoga to help us get through that. Yoga helps to relieve a lot of tension in the body, helps to relieve a lot of that anxiety you might have. Probably undoubtedly we do have about this. It also helps a lot on the inside of the body that we're not really aware of and that we may not notice, but it helps relieve a lot of the tension that's built up inside the body. So this is a hot yoga practice. And again, I encourage you to do what you need to do for your body. I will be offering modifications and I will be talking my way probably almost all the way through this. Um, so we're going to start on our backs. All the way down, feet flat on the floor, knees up toward the ceiling. This is a constructive rest pose. So you begin to take some nice deep breaths, filling up to those lungs completely. And again, if you are new to my classes, I will, I talk a lot through these classes, but one of the reasons is that we need to understand what's happening in our bodies and see if we can help release some of that tension that's in there. So we often breathe through just the upper third part of our lungs. So the bottom two thirds part of the lungs fill up with a lot of fluid and dead air, gathers up a lot of toxins that we don't need. So taking those nice deep breaths, filling up through your chest completely, feel your chest expand into every little corner of those lungs. You can feel it, you can feel the cool air coming in through your nose, down the back of your throat, filling up through your lungs completely. Nice deep breath. You can visualize that air coming in gathering up all the things we do not need and exhaling it all out. Some research says that we exhale up to 70% of the body's toxins. Well, if that's true, then those exhales become very important to us. So visualize that. Filling up to the lungs completely. And take that breath into your diaphragm as well. Diaphragm is a major breathing organ. Lungs get a lot of credit, but if your diaphragm is not working, you are not breathing. So you might feel when you breathe deeply into that, you might feel your ribs move out to the side. You might feel your belly rise, but know that you're breathing deeply into that diaphragm. Again, as we get into the cold and flu season, on top of this pandemic that we've got going, those inhales and exhales have become very important. Nice deep breath. Allow your shoulders to relax on the mat. Allow your hips to relax. Nice deep breath. Okay, we're going to add some movement to this. So place those hands right down next to the hips. Feet are flat on the floor and the knees are lined up with the hips. Feel that tailbone up off the mat, lifting through the hips. And then rolling down each little vertebra, gently pressing the tailbone into the mat when you get there. And roll it back up. Gentle movement will warm up to the spine, will warm up to the hips. Continuing those nice deep breaths. You can add the arms if you'd like, reaching those arms up next to your ears. Lifting through the hips, bringing the arms down. And the hips doesn't matter if the arms and the hips go up at the same time or if one goes up and the other. Anytime we lift those arms up over the head, we don't create space into the spine. And our spine is going to say thank you very much because those little discs in between each vertebra have been compressed just by a few upright creatures. So gravity compresses that spine. In my opinion, those discs have no place to go but out. So it looks to me like it might be a herniated disc or a bulging disc that we might end up with. So we very intentionally help create more space into the spine. Next time those hips get to the mat, let's leave them there. Then bring one leg in toward the chest, stretch the other leg all the way out. Lengthening on that side of the body, extended leg. 
creating space between the torso and the thigh. And then switch legs. Switch your legs again. And one more time, switch legs. And bring both knees in. Give yourself a little hug and watch on the side to side. Housing in the middle, place those feet flat on the floor. Roll over to one side. We're working our way into a child's pose facing forward. So, child's pose, see, so let's take it all the way to the back. It's a resting position. You can come here anytime you choose throughout your entire practice. But right now, we're going into a kneeling plank. And then back to child's pose. So, in and out of that kneeling plank, child's pose flow. Move you with the breath as much as we can do that. At the very least, we continue to breathe because we often find that we're holding our breath in yoga poses, and all of a sudden we're gasping for air. We're going to try and keep a nice, steady, long, deep breath going. But if you find that you are holding your breath and all of a sudden you're gasping for air, please open your mouth and take a nice deep breath because I'm not there to do any CPR. Pause the time you get up to your hands and knees. Then tuck your toes, take the hips up and lower down the up. All the way up, press your chest towards your thighs. Elbows and ears come close to each other. You'll look like an inverted V. This is a great stretch, all the way down the spine, all the way down the legs. Slowly lower those heels closer to the mat. They don't need to get there, but that's the direction they're going. And then in plank position, pause here for just a moment. Anytime you're in plank position, whether you're on your knees or on your toes, check to see that the wrists are right underneath the shoulders so the shoulders are supported. Engage through your belly button so your belly isn't hanging. If your belly pulls down, it's tugging on that low back. So engage through your belly. And then think about lifting through the chest and broadening through the upper back. You're not rounding through the upper back, we're just going to broaden through it. Because if we allow the chest to drop, we're hanging out the shoulder joint. So support that shoulder. All the way back up to down dog. In and out of that plank down dog flow. You can be on your toes or on your knees, either one is fine. And again, I encourage you to do what you need to do for your body because every single body is different. So if we need to make modifications to make those poses fit our body better, that's what we need to do. Pausing the next time you get into down dog. Then walk forward into forward fold. Take as many steps as you need to get there. You could hop up there. Inhaling halfway up the length of the hamstrings. Exhale, fold. Circle sweep lift all the way up. Exhaling into chair, so sit back in chair. Inhale, again. Swan leg. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Circle sweep lift all the way up. Exhale into chair. Inhale again. Squat that forward, bend your knees. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale. Circle sweep lift all the way up into chair. We're going into a chair flow. So inhale, we lift. Exhale, we sit back into chair. So continue that movement, and there are several things that we're looking at in this particular pose. Again, we're working through the shoulders. And again, anytime we lift those arms up, you can feel that spine is creating space in between the shoulder vertebra. That's a good thing. And when we sit back in chair, the weight is in the heels. So you should still be able to wiggle your toes and you should still be able to see your toes. If you're coming too far forward and you can't see your toes, push your butt back because you're sitting into a chair. So sit back into that chair. Inhale, we lift. And exhale. Inhale, we lift. Pausing the next time we get into chair. Into bouncing chair, so up onto our toes. Squeezing a block in a real or imaginary between those thighs helps stabilize that pose, and you can feel your inner thighs activate. Then inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, lift up to the back. 
Inhale, we lift. And exhale. Inhale, we lift. And exhale. Inhale, all the way up, drop the heels down, hands come right down to the heart. Then we're going to add a twisting chair. So again, sit back into your chair. This twist is just going to be chest and shoulders. So rather than taking the entire body around, we're going to keep the knees and the hips and the feet all going in the same direction. Again, if you have a block or a pillow, if you're at home and you put something between your thighs, it helps to remind those hips and knees to stay facing forward. So hands at the heart, we're taking a gentle twist to the right. Just chest and shoulders. And here, we're not going very far. Back to the center, inhale and we lift. Exhale, sit back and twist left. Inhale, we lift. Exhale, sit back, twist right. Inhale, we lift. Exhale, sit back, twist left. Engage through your core this time so you can feel it as you come all the way back through. Sit back and twist. Inhale, you lift. Exhale, sit back and twist. Nice. One more each side. Inhale, we lift. Sit back and twist. It's a gentle twist to that spine. We're just beginning to warm it up. We'll get to a deeper twist in a little bit. Inhale, we lift. Swan right there, bend your knees and hinge from the hip. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold left foot to the back. Drop that knee down. Top of that back foot goes flat on the mat so you can stretch to the ankle. But again, what's pretty important is the spread knee stacked on top of that ankle. Not forward and not too far back. And reach one arm up. Doesn't matter which arm because we will do both. Nice deep breath as you inhale, lift. That hand comes down, reach the other hand up. Again, we're adding a gentle twist into that spine. Hands come down, take it back to child pose. Both knees to the back. Into kneeling plank. This time we're going to lower ourselves down. So externally rotate your upper arm so that bend in the elbow almost faces forward. Elbows are close to the side, lower yourself down. And you can add a push up in every body. All the way down to the back. Gently lift the chest for cobra to back down. Back extension. Lower back down. Feel that belly button up and going back to top. Then the left foot comes forward. Help it along if it needs some help. It doesn't always get there by itself. Then one arm reaches. Nice deep breath. Back hand comes down, reach the other one up. And into forward fold. So step both feet forward. Inhale halfway up. Exhale fold. Circle sweep lift all the way up. Exhale, lean into chair. Sit back in your chair. Inhale, we lift. Swan back forward. Halfway up. And fold right foot back. Drop that knee down. Flatten out that foot. And again, reach one arm up. Nice deep breath. And you might find that your movements become bigger and bigger the more you do the poses. That hand comes down, reach the other one up. But it doesn't have to be that way. Again, pay attention to what your body needs today. Back to child's pose. Into kneeling plank. Bring your elbows in closer and lower yourself down. Once more, you can add that push up with your body. All the way to the back. And in Cobra, it's really the upper back that's lifting you up. So the hands don't really have to do a lot. They're not necessarily pushing you up there helping you balance. Lower back down, feel that belly button up, back to child pose. Right foot comes forward. Reach one arm up. And then the other one. And step forward in the forward pose. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold, bend your knees. Circle sweep, lift all the way up. Exhale, we made the chair. That's one sun salutation to another one. Inhale, we lift. Squat right forward, bend your knees. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold, left foot to the back. You can be on your knee or on your toes either way. If you're on your toes, push that heel toward the back wall so this thigh isn't hanging down. Pick up that thigh. 
lengthen through that leg. And again, reach one arm up. Nice deep breath. That hand comes down, the other one goes up. And to down dog or child's pose, either way. Enjoy that stretch. Into plank position. Stabilize your shoulders, bring your elbows in and lower yourself down. Gently lift the chest. And lower. Back to down dog or child's pose, either one. Left foot comes forward again. Help move on if it needs some help. Reaching one arm up. And then the other one. And step forward into forward fold. Halfway up. And circle sweep lift all the way up. In the chair. One more time through, we'll leave with that right leg. So inhale, we lift. Squat that forward, bend your knees. Halfway up. And pull, right foot back. Both arms can reach this time, so lift them all the way up. Create space in the spine. It's not just the shoulders that are going up, it's that entire torso that lengthens. You can add a little bit of a back bend if it feels okay for you, and then down dog or top foot. Into plank position. Lower yourself down. Control it all the way down. Don't let your belly button keep the rest of your body to the mat. Gently lift the chest. And lower. Down dog or jaw pose. And the right foot comes forward. Once more, let's reach both arms up. Add that little back bend if you like. In the forward fold, hands to the floor, step it together. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, circle sweep, lift all the way up. Exhale, in chair. Nice. Inhale, we lift. Swan back forward, bend your knees. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold, left foot back. We're going to warrior one, so put that heel down. Inhale, lift the arms all the way up. Bring your hands right down to your heart. This is warrior one. Let's check this pose. Shoulders and the hips and this front thigh should all be facing right down the middle of your foot. Back foot's flat on the mat, and the weight is more toward the outer edge of that back foot than it is on the inside. Again, if the weight's on the inside, this knee collapses. It will be hurting our knee. So gently press it more toward the outer edge of that back thigh. This is warrior one. Inhale, lift your arm. We're going to warrior two. Exhale it out to warrior two. So in warrior two, we've opened up the front of the hip. Warrior poses move all the way through the entire hip area. So your chest should be facing along into the mat. Stretch those arms out. Warrior two, reverse that warrior right arm comes all the way up. Out of that C-shape to your spine. Then decide to pose right elbow, right thigh. Inhale and reverse, right arm lifts. Exhale, warrior two, stretch it out. To worry one, reach up. Hips are facing forward. Exhale out, worry two. Inhale and reverse, right arm up. To side angle, right elbow, right thigh. Inhale and reverse. Always seeking some kind of expansion in the body. Stretching those arms out, worry two. To worry one, reach up. One more time through, just like that, worry two. And reverse, right arm up, adding that C shape to the spine. To warrior two, no, side angle. Add a reverse. Then to warrior two. Nice, warrior one, reach out. Excellent, forward fold, hands to the floor, step it together. Again, inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. Right foot goes to the back, put that heel down, inhale, lift the arms all the way up. Exhale it out to warrior two. Inhale and reverse, left arm up. Exhale, side angle, left elbow, left thigh. Inhale and reverse, left arm lifts. Exhale, warrior two. To warrior one. 
Open it up to where you two check and make sure that front thigh is still facing forward. As we reverse, left arm up. To side angle. So you should feel a nice stretch in that left inner thigh. Give us a lined up. Inhale and reverse. Exhale, warrior two. So warrior one. One more time for warrior two. And reverse. So side angle, like right left elbow, left thigh. And reverse. So warrior two. So warrior one, reach up. Nice, we're going to down dog, hands to the floor, hips to the back. Put those hips up nice and high, equal bicycle those legs a little bit, bending one knee and then the other. And you might find that you continue to do your practice that those heels get a little bit closer to the mat. Stopping in the center, lift that left leg all the way up. And bend that left knee, flex your foot. Turn your body and look underneath your left arm. Sure, open up the front of that left hip. You can almost keep yourself in the back. Straighten out that leg, bring it all the way through, going back to where you're lying. So put your back heel down, inhale, lift the arms all the way up. Take it out to where you're two. Moving into triangles, so straighten that front leg. This time we're going to allow this left arm to reach all the way out here. Onto the inner, you can feel the lengthening from your fingertips to the fingertips. Might even feel it in your left thigh. Then slowly lower that left hand down. Again, it needs to rest on something, so rather than having it just hang out here in La La Land, rest it against your calf, your ankle, or if you have a block that you hold to the tank, rest it on. If you don't have a block at home, a pillow, a book would be good. Nice deep breath. Nice, let's add the twist so that right hand comes down. Again, it needs to rest on something. Left hand goes to our hip. Gently twist. We're twisting from that belly button first. So start that twist at the base of the spine. It only goes so far, and then the chest and the shoulders might be able to continue that twist. Left hand can stay on your hip or even lift your arm up. Either the way is fine. Don't forget to breathe while you're here. And take both hands down, step it back to down up. Once more, keep those hips up nice and high. You have to press your chest toward your thighs. Slowly lower your heels. And the right leg lifts all the way up. And bend that knee. Flex your foot, turn your body underneath your right arm. Open up that hip. Straighten up that leg, bring it all the way through. Again, we're going back to where you want. Put your back heel down, inhale, lift the arms. Exhale it up to where you're two. Nice. Check to make sure that front thigh is still going right down the center of the foot. Sometimes it turns with us, and then we'll be hurting our knees. So open that hip up. Then again, we're going to triangle to straighten that front leg. This time, we're just going to allow this right hand to drop. It's going to show up closer to your knee than it is to your ankle hip at the moment. So you might feel more of a stretch in this left rib cage. Left arm goes straight up, and you can take a peek at it. Nice deep breath. Then let's add a twist. So allow this right hand just to delve all the way down that right leg. Left hand comes down, find a block or find something to rest it on. Right hand goes to our hip, and again, we'll take a nice gentle twist on the base of the spine. Right hand can stay on your hip or even lift that arm. Nice. Back to the center. Step forward into forward fold. Inhale halfway up. We're in an inversion when we drop our head down. We're coming halfway up to help equalize that. Lower back down. Circle sweep lift all the way up. Hands come right down to the earth. Nice. Hands go to the hips. The left foot steps to the back. We're going into a forward fold and into a three point balance. So we have softness in the front knees and kind of walk to that point. It's not bent a lot, it's just soft. Then lengthen through the torso, so you're taking a nice deep breath. Inhale, going to that spine. And hinge from the hips. 
So keeping your spine in this natural curves rather than rounding through the back. We want to keep that spine in its natural curves. So the hands can again come all the way to the mat or to your block. Shift your weight around so the weight is evenly distributed between both feet. And take a nice deep breath. Every exhale might allow you to pull and fold a little bit more. And then today, let's move that left foot back a little bit more. And play with that distance for yourself and see how far back that foot can go so you can keep both feet still flat on the floor and still feel a nice stretch in your legs. So see what works best for you. You don't have to be in a wide stretch. Nice deep breaths again, allow that chest to come closer to your thighs. And shift that weight forward onto that front foot. Lifting the left leg behind us. So we're trying not to collapse into a pose. Collapse into a pose, but allow that front leg to bend. So we're going to lengthen through that leg. Lengthen through the leg that's lifted as well. It kind of gets lazy back there and just hangs out. But we're going to lengthen it from the hip through the heel of that lifted leg. Nice deep breath. This is a three point balance, and you can stay right here if you choose. You can float the fingers of one or both hands, or go to a half moon pose. Half moon pose has your right foot on the mat, so your right hand stays down. Left hand goes to our hip, but we gently open up that body. Turning the torso so it almost faces the long edge of our mat. And that left hand can stay on your hip, or you can lift the left arm up either way. Nice deep breath. Back to the center, bring both feet forward. Inhale halfway up. Exhale fold. Circle sweep lift all the way up. Exhale right down the right. Nice. Hands on the hips, right foot sits back. What we do on one side, we try to remember to keep on the other. I don't always remember that, but I have people that remind me many times. So lengthen through that. Legs are standing up and then hands from the hip. Hands again come all the way down to the mat. Or your block, just so they're not just hanging out here because they need to be supported by something. Sometimes we use those blocks, or many times we use the blocks, to bring that floor closer to us. So not all of us are able to reach all the way to the mat, and it could be because we have really tight hamstrings or tight glutes or tight back. It also could be the way joints fit together. So we use blocks or some kind of a prop. Once more, take a nice deep breath. Every exhale allows you to pull and fold a little bit more. Nice deep breath. Then again, we'll shift that weight forward onto that front foot. Lifting the right leg behind us. And think light. Again, as if someone has wrapped a strap around your belly and they're lifting you up. Activate through the leg you're standing on. Activate through that lifted leg. Stay right there or go to half moon pose. To help with your balance in half moon pose, it would often help to keep our gaze fixed toward the end of the mat, right off the center of it, just off the end. Nice. And back to the center. Step forward into forward fold. Inhale halfway up. Exhale. Circle sweep lift all the way up. Hands come right down. Working on some more balanced poses, so step that left foot to the back just a little bit and bend your front knee. We're in a little bit of a lunge. We're going to warrior three. So when you're ready to straighten that front leg, hinge from the hip. And lower your chest. Not staying in there right now, so that's that lunge. Bend your knee, tap your foot back, and stand up. Nice. Again, straighten that leg. Hinge from your hip. 
and back to the lunge, bend your knee. Anytime we bend that knee, we're working around the soft tissue that holds that knee together. So one more time, straighten that leg. This time we're gonna hang out in that warrior three for just a breath or two. Hands from the hip. Hands can stay at your heart. You can take them out to the side if you'd like. Nice deep breath. And all the way back up. Both feet flat. Nice, shake out those legs. Take a nice deep breath and inhale and lift. Exhale, down your heart. So in case we are holding our breath in that moment. Right foot steps to the back, bend your front knee a little bit. Then again, straighten that front leg. And trim it again. Bend your knee, go back to the lunge. And again, straighten that leg. And trim it again. Back to the lunge. One more time, straighten your leg. Hinge from the hip. Relax through your shoulders, but keep a strong leg that you're standing on. Nice, both feet come forward. Shake those legs out, excellent. Let's go to tree pose as long as we're working on our nose. Hands can be at your heart. You can also place them at your hips. You can place them out to the side. But find something to focus on. It could be just a few feet in front of you. It might be straight ahead. Plant one foot, bring the other up to his toes, and the knee can go out. Nice deep breath. Try not to have little sets of hip going on in a straight leg. So, and rather than popping that out to the side, think of lengthening through that entire side. Then when you're ready, you can lift that foot. It can rest always close to the mat if that's best for you. You can lift it up just a little bit, or you can place it against your calf, or you can place it against your inner thigh. We often come to practice into our mats with balance on different sides of the body. Sometimes we have no balance at all. So if that's you today, it's a good thing to keep that toe close to the mat. Nice deep breath. You can keep your hands at your heart, you can lift your arms up, whichever you choose. Don't forget to breathe, though. Nice, bring those hands back down. And then release that leg. Excellent, shake those legs out. Other foot plants, base of the big toe, base of the little toe on the heel. We're going to carry all your weight. So have that base set foundation down. Up on your toes on the other side and then you out. We have activated through the hip flexors. That psoas, the little psoas muscle, one of my very favorite muscles in the entire body because it has so much to do. Activates every single thing that goes on in our body. So just by lifting that knee up, we have activated that. Taking the knee up, those those deep butt muscles in the back that attach to the outer thigh and pull that thigh up. We've got a lot going on in that particular pose, in addition to the balance and the strength in that leg that we're standing on. And then, of course, we want us to remember to breathe. Man, it's a lot. Again, the hands can stay at the heart, you can lift those arms up if you choose. Slowly bring those hands back down. And then release your leg. Excellent. Take a nice deep breath. Inhale, we lift. Swan back forward, bend your knees. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold. We're going to our hands and knees. So on all fours, our wrists again are right underneath our shoulders. If the arms are too far forward, there's no support for the shoulder joints. So bring those arms right underneath the shoulder. Knees go directly underneath the hips. We're going into some cat cow. So pull that belly button in, tuck your tailbone, and tuck your chin. That's that. We can reverse all that and allow that belly button to drop as your tailbone and your chin lift. In and out of that cat cow at your own pace, maybe you're moving with your breath. At the very least, continue to breathe. 
maybe you can feel like you're articulating through each little vertebrae in your spine. Or maybe you can feel your abs are working. Open into the spine. Pausing the next time you get back to a neutral spine. And stretch the left leg out behind you. Toes go toward the mat. Leg can be lifted as high as the hip, but no higher. As the left leg extended out behind, so that means the right arm goes out the front and the thumb goes toward the ceiling. Reaching in both directions, feel like someone is pulling you in both directions. Nice. Back the hands and knees, lift to sides. Right leg sticks out. Point your toes toward your ceiling and hop. No, don't do that. Not toward the ceiling. Point your toes toward the floor. Your thumb can go out and go toward the ceiling. Nice deep breath. Not allowing your belly button to drag as it will tug on your low back. And back to seat. Nice. One more time up into down dog. Get those hips up nice and high. Bring in the pigeon from here, so lift that left leg all the way up. And bring it through. Lay that knee down right next to your hand. Slide your right leg straight down from your hip. Again, the top of that foot's flat on the mat. It's pigeon, it's a tremendous hip opener. So we want to see if we can just keep our hips square to the front edge of our mat. And maybe keep this little left butt cheek up off the mat. If you have a block or a pillow and it works better for you to prop it up, you can certainly do that. Then stand on your hands or take your elbows all the way down to the mat. Nice deep breath. Releasing the tension that's being held into those hips. Yoga spends a lot of time working through the hips. Because we hold a lot of tension into our hips, which is going to show up as pain in the low back, or all the way up into the shoulders, or into the knee, because the next joints need to take over. So nice deep breath. One more nice deep breath, we're working our way back to down dog. So when you're ready, place your hands underneath your shoulders, tuck your back toe, pick your hips up all the way up. And the right leg lifts. And bring it through. Lay that knee down right next to your right hand. The left leg goes straight down. Same thing on this side. So if you have a block or a pillow, you can certainly take your elbows to that. Or you can take your elbows all the way to the mat. Whichever works best for you, but allow those hips to open up. Take a nice deep breath and release the tension in your hips. One more nice deep breath. Hands go underneath those shoulders. Sweep the legs around so you can sit up facing forward. Here, flat on the mat, we're going to add another twist to the spine. So this time, let's just cross our legs. Sit up nice and tall. We're twisting to the right. So the right hand goes behind. Every time you inhale, lengthen to that spine. Exhale, gently twist. Again, the hips are only going to go so far. Bend the chest. And continue that twist. Bring your shoulders and maybe your head. So you decide if it feels better for you to keep your hips planted on the mat and you just twist each little vertebrae independently, or if it feels better for your spine to lift that hip up just a little bit and allow you to twist. See what feels better for you. Yoga is about releasing tension in the body, not about adding more. So the spine can move in, each little vertebra can move independently of the one that's connected to it, but it tends to become locked. Or if you have spinal fusion, you'll know that. All the way to the back, back to the center. Switch those legs around. Sit up nice and tall, we'll twist in the other direction. Inhale, lengthen through that spine, exhale, gently twist. Again, the belly button's only going so far. So that takes that low back around and it stops. Then inhale, lengthen, exhale, gently twist, and you might feel your shoulders can move back a little bit more. 
keep moving through that thoracic spine and up into the neck, into your cervical spine, all the way back. Nice and flat. But you should never have any pain in yoga. So if you have pain in yoga, your body's saying you've gone too far, you need to back up. So pay attention to that. No matter what a teacher says. Back to the center. Nice, we're going to roll onto our back. All the way down. Bring your knees into your chest, give yourself a little hug and walk to the side to side. That back has been working a lot today. So let's give a little massage as we rock to the side to side. And find that nice deep breath again because we may have lost it someplace along in our practice today. Stopping in the center, cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh. Reach through that little triangle you just made, clasp your hands behind your left thigh, and gently pull that body up close to your chest. Your right elbow is resting against your right knee. Helps hold that knee open. So the closer this left thigh comes to your chest, the more stretch you might feel in the opposite hamstring and knees back glute. It's called the figure four. It's also a pigeon when we're on our back. Nice deep breath. And release that leg right down. Slide your right ankle off its foot and lay right next to your inner thigh. It's the tree pose that we were doing standing up. But we've taken the balance issue out of it. And we're allowing our back to rest. So you should still feel a stretch in this right inner thigh and across the pelvis and the front of the hips. Nice deep breath. Always a good time to check in with your body and see if you're still holding some tension someplace. If so, on your exhales, allow that tension to release. Then bring that right knee in and gently pull it across the body. Again, we have a little twist into the spine. So pay attention if that feels okay for your spine to have both shoulders still on the mat. You can leave them on the mat, stretch your right arm out to the side and gently twist. But if it does not feel good for your spine tonight, roll out to your side a little bit more. Nice deep breath. And if you have your right arm stretched out to the side, you can turn and look for those fingertips. Add a little twist into the neck. And back to the center. Plant that right foot on the mat, bring your left ankle up, cross it over, pull that right thigh in. And you can gently rock side to side. Releasing that right leg all the way down and slide the left leg off. Nice. Back to shoulders, relax your hips. And bring that left knee in, gently pull it across the body. Stretch your arm out, look to your fingertips, pay attention to your spine. Gentle twist. And back to the center. Settle so again for that primary relaxation. And again, it can be in several different spots or positions. You can have your feet flat on the floor, with your knees up toward the ceiling. You can stretch your legs out, stretch your arms out. You can use a block or a pillow. 
one of the advantages of being at home is you can use pillows and blankets for different props. So if you want to put a blanket underneath your knees or a pillow under your knees, that often feels good. Really Wherever you end up, it is your plan of relaxation. And it's a very important part of yoga, one we often shortchange ourselves on. So don't go away just yet. Allow yourself to rest and restore. The body has a tremendous ability to heal itself. If we open up a lot of blockages, which we have done today on yoga poses, and we may not be able to see those, but we can certainly feel them. We can feel that maybe the hips have opened up a little bit more, maybe the shoulders have release some of the tension. Maybe we've slowed our breath down a little bit. Nice deep breath. And while you continue to take those nice deep breaths, I'd like to remind us of some of the benefits of yoga. In addition to working on our balance and our strength, our joint mobility, our range of motion, we help stabilize the joints, we help work on the soft tissues that hold our joints together. We help create space in the body. We've done a lot on the inside that you may not be able to see again. Our body often stays in a hyperloric state. It's that sympathetic nervous system on alert, which may show up as rapid heart rate, shallow breathing, could also show up as depression, anxiety, could show up as belly issues. So know that those nice deep breaths you are taking right now helps to calm down that entire sympathetic nervous system. Works on the parasympathetic nervous system, so it helps slow down our heart rate, lowers blood glucose levels, helps to boost our immune system. When our body is on hyper alert, the immune system is compromised. That's a given. So when we try to balance that out or even improve our immune system, you slow down that fight, fight, or freeze syndrome. Nice deep breath. I encourage you to stay as long as you can in your final relaxation. You might find that you need to doze off for a little bit and that's really okay. So I want you to know that you have done great things for your body today. And I want to thank you for being here. I can hardly wait for us to be able to get back to class again. But until that happens, take care of yourself. Be well. Stay safe. Take a nice deep breath every chance you get. Scoop in all that goodness that life has to offer you, bring it right down to your heart. Taking those nice deep breaths. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.